Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I am here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns they're going to be selling in their upcoming December of 2016 premiere auction. And we have here a Spanish Holoar pistol. What makes this one particularly cool is that it is a 45 ACP caliber Holoar. Now I have a previous video out there on the Holoar in general, which you can see a link to in the description below. Uh, but in the, the basic storyline is that in 1919, a guy named Jose Lopez Arnaez patented this idea for a palanca, or a lever, on the side of a pistol. And there's some rumor that he, unsubstantiated rumor, that he got this idea from a one-armed Spanish Foreign Legion uh, colonel, or that he was inspired by it. it. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know, it sounds a little bit fanciful. At any rate, he comes up with the idea and the notion here is that this allows you to cock the pistol one-handed. Kind of cool. He patents it, gets his patent in 1919, and then over the next couple of years, tinkers around and goes looking for a company to actually manufacture the guns. And in the Abar area of Spain, he finds a company, uh, a, a shop run by a couple of brothers, Hijos de Calixo Rizabalaga, and they have a pistol called the Sharpshooter, which is a uh, it's a pretty unfancy little blowback pistol, didn't even have an extractor on it, and it wasn't selling all that well, it had been out for a number of years, and they were just in the process of updating it with an extractor, so they had the new extractor model they were hoping would sell better, and they looked at it and they thought, well, you know, this is really would be a nice match for this interesting Palanca device, and maybe that would get people uh, more interested, make it a little more novel. So. Uh, now, Arnaez didn't want to give up total control of his patent. He didn't want to license it. What he actually, what they combined, ended up doing is Rizabalaga produced pistols, which they then gave to uh, Arnaez, who then installed the levers himself and, uh, and then sold the guns. So he bought these pistols at a nice cheap rate, installed his lever, and then sold them retail. And that was the arrangement. Um, the name of the pistol, Holoar, comes from the first two letters of each of his three names, Jose Lopez Arnaez, uh, J-O-L-O-A-R. Uh, he apparently originally wanted, wanted to call it something like the Arnaez Automatic Pistol and really just slap his name totally on it, but um, the, the manufacturing company wasn't too thrilled with that idea. At any rate, these were manufactured, I believe, in four calibers, uh, 25 auto, 380 9mm Largo, which was of course the one of the, well, the service pistol caliber in Spain uh, for a long time, and 45 ACP. And by far the two common ones to find are 380 and 9 Largo. Those are because those two calibers in particular were purchased by the Peruvian mounted police, uh, who were by far the largest and really kind of the only foreign uh, bulk purchaser of these pistols. Presumably they liked them because with the palanca here, you'd be able to cock the, the pistol one-handed while still holding onto the reins of your horse. They were mounted police after all. So they liked that notion. And then in 1969, Interarms bought all of, all of their surplus pistols that were still lying around, brought them into the US here, and that's why we see a lot of those two calibers. The 25 auto ones are pretty scarce. There might be 32 automatic ones. I'm not entirely sure. I know the Sharpshooter, the original version that this pistol came from, was made in 32. Not entirely sure if they made any of the Holo R's in 32. And then, of course, 45 ACP was also made. Um, pretty rare to find those, and that's why I wanted to take a look at this one specifically. This thing's pretty huge. Um, all the Holo R's are simple blowback pistols, even this one in 45. So it's got a really heavy slide and a pretty hefty recoil spring in order to make it a, a safe, functional pistol. Uh, you can see the extractor here added on the side, and then this is the palanca. It's really quite simple. There's no spring, there's no catch. It's just a lever screwed into the side of the pistol. A Little bit of checkering here on the front strap, and the way that works is you're shooting, shooting, shooting. By the way, there is no trigger guard on these either. Um, and when you need to use this, you can grab it with, on the 45 version, you can grab it with three fingers, pull it all the way back. There's also no slide hold open. These are, like I said, these are very simple guns mechanically. Um, so yeah, there you go. Open the slide. And when you're, when you're shooting, this will bounce back and forth. You can tighten the screw down and get it to stay in position, but it will inevitably loosen when you're shooting. 
but as you're shooting, that lever really just doesn't get in your way. This is as far back as it can come. It, it seems like it'd be really annoying, but it's the sort of thing you don't actually notice. Uh, it is a single action only pistol, so that's part of the reason you would have this, is presumably if you were in horse cavalry carrying this pistol, you would probably carry it with the magazine loaded and the chamber empty, and then when you went to draw the pistol, you would charge it like so, which also cocks the hammer and readies it to fire. <coughs> now, going back to the original lineage of this thing, because there was no extractor in the original sharpshooter, you had to have some way to remove fired cases. Um, contrary to common expectation, I think, um, a blowback pistol will generally extract and eject pretty well even without an extractor, just because you've got enough residual pressure. But, of course, if you've just got a cartridge chambered and no extractor, how do you pull that one out if you don't want to use it? Well, this has a tip-up barrel that would allow you to then reach in and pull out your last cartridge if you wanted to unload the gun. That was a feature carried over from the original sharpshooter and uh, maintained on the Holo R's probably because they simply already had the tooling. You don't really need that tip-up barrel now that you have an extractor in the gun, but they left it there anyway. On the 45 caliber guns, as well as the nine Largos, the rear sight is located on the barrel, so you've actually got decent sights. On the 380 caliber guns, all you have, the, the rear sight is machined into the back of the slide here, kind of like this. Magazine release is on the heel, and you do also have a lanyard loop, and by the way, the grips are contoured for sort of finger grooves there. Um, so kind of interesting, the magazine on this one appears to have been cut in half at some point and then repaired. Uh, it's kind of noticeably missing the witness hole right here, and you can see welding marks where it was put back together there. Um, not sure if this is a seven or eight round magazine, I suspect eight. The grip on this thing is pretty large. We've got some markings here on the left side of the slide. Pistola Holoar, uh, Ibar, España, Spain, of course. The patents there are for the sharpshooter, uh, two different patents associated with the sharpshooter. Caliber 45, on the 380s and the 9 Largos, they will both be marked caliber 9, because 380 is 9 millimeter short, so you have to distinguish those by other features. Then we have a couple of Spanish proof marks here and a serial number. Uh, that C part of the proof mark indicates that this one was proofed in 1929. Uh, by the early 1930s, uh, Arnaya's workshop actually burned down in a fire, um, and that was the end of his work. I have a holo R embossed into the grips there. So it's a little hard to see here, but you do also have holo R uh, stamped into the palanca itself. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. A uh, cool, rare version of a pistol that's unusual and interesting and actually something we can find here in the United States. So if you have a 380 and a 25 maybe and a 9 Largo and you'd like to add this last one, the 45, to your collection, or if you just want to go straight to the, the top of the line, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on this pistol and you can check out their pictures and their description and place a bid online or over the phone or here live at the auction. Thanks for watching.